Hello friends, I am Dr. Deepak Agarwal. I am a professor in neurosurgery at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And today we will be discussing brain death. Now you must wonder what is brain death and how do we define it? So by definition brain death is cessation of all brain activity due to lack of oxygen to the brain cells. If you remember from my previous videos, brain cells are the only cells in the body which cannot regenerate. So if there is lack of oxygen due to any cause, the cells will die within 3 minutes. So any hypoxic event which is also known as lack of oxygen can lead to brain death. The common reasons are attempted hanging or head injuries or spinal injuries or any other condition requiring hospital stay which leaks to a decrease in the oxygen which is going to the brain. Now that we know what brain death is, we will go on to the introduction or the reasons people go into brain death. You must have heard of many stories which appear in the newspapers or on the TV regularly stating that there was a patient who was declared dead in the hospital and he woke up in the mortuary or at the cremation ground. And these are not untrue. The reason is most of these patients had some metabolic or other reason which caused the heart to stop or become so faint that it was not detected. And when that metabolic condition actually you know resolved, the patient became conscious again and started moving around. So do not confuse it with brain death. Brain death if it occurs is irreversible, patient will never come back. Now we come to the diagnosis. How do we diagnose a patient with brain death? The best thing is in India there was this law passed which was also known as the Human Organs Act 1994 and in this act the definition of the brain death, how to diagnose brain death and what can be done legally in patients with brain death was properly defined. We use only and only clinical acumen to diagnose brain death. The first thing is we assess the neurological condition if the patient is conscious, unconscious and how deep the unconscious level is. There is a scoring system known as GCS and it has to be at the absolute minimum of that score to even qualify for considering for brain death testing. The second thing we test is the pupils of the eyes and we see whether they are fixed and dilated. The third thing we see is the spontaneous respiration because most of these patients are on ventilators. It is important to see that besides the ventilator is the patient taking his own breath or not. Fourth thing is we see for certain reflexes like the cuff reflex, the corneal reflex, gag reflex to see if these are still present because these are last things to go in a patient who is dying. And finally we test for the breathing in a different way which is known as the apnea test. So that if we stop the ventilator is it possible that after 5 minutes or 10 minutes the patient again starts breathing or not. So these tests are done by a neurologist or a neurosurgeon and have to be done 6 hours apart and if at both times they show the same result patient can be declared as brain death. Now very important thing to know is the patient's heart will still be beating normally and this is the enigma. So a patient's heart is still beating but the brain has died, a neurosurgeon or a neurologist has said that the patient is brain dead. It is almost equivalent to saying that the patient is dead. However, because of the limitation in the Indian law, we obviously cannot just declare the patient dead and send him to the crematorium with a beating heart. So that is why we wait till the heart also stops beating. A lot of people have asked that if the heart is still beating, why are you declaring the patient dead? And it is very difficult to explain to all that heart beating is now not considered as important as the brain working. Brain is the most critical organ and if it stops working, then other organs take some time before they stop working. And especially in today's age and date, when we have life support equipment like ventilators, like uh, cardiopulmonary bypass equipment, then we can keep the patient heart beating, breathing continuing without patient himself doing anything. And this is why it is important to know the difference between brain death and cardiac death. So why is it important to diagnose or to certify a patient with brain death? The most important thing is that then this patient can be eligible for organ donation. 
as we know the most common causes of brain death are patients with head injury or spinal injury or from hanging most of these patient group is the young males most often and some females between 18 years and 30 years so these are the patients who are best suited for giving their organs to someone else. India has the worst organ donation rate in the whole of the world. And that is because there are so many concepts around giving organs including religious concepts, including stigmas, including people who just do not believe that the heart is beating but the brain is dead so a patient is dead. So we try and educate but the final education has to come from within. Because of the legal sanction to diagnose brain death and to actually confirm that this patient is dead from the brain side what we do is if the relatives agree for organ donation and that is an entirely different story altogether and we feel that the patient and is uh, ready to give his organs and we have a recipient ready also and then only is the time that the law allows a doctor to pronounce the patient actually dead. So the patient might still be alive in the sense that his heart is beating. But this time we can actually make a death certificate and pronounce him dead having an arbitrary time when he is being shifted to the operation theatre to have his organs taken out. Then the organ donation team which consists of surgeons like the kidney surgeon, the lung surgeon, you know, and the surgeons which remove other organs, they come together and take out the organs of the patient. After that, the body is again stitched up and sent to the mortuary. And the organs obviously given to the recipients which are available at that time. So I hope you understand a little bit more about brain death, its diagnosis, its implications and how it helps us to have the organs donated to people who are waiting. And you know in India, there are so many patients with kidney disease, with lung disease, with cardiac problems who are waiting for organs from other patients to help them live longer. So we all have to think as a society, although I know anybody having brain death is not a good thing, but there are certain things which are not in our hands. Only thing in our hands is to prevent, prevent what? Prevent head injuries by wearing helmets, safe driving, so that do you do not land up with an accident in a hospital in a state like brain death. So thank you for watching. This is Dr. Deepak Agrawal.